Hello everyone, I hope you're all going well, and welcome to the second episode of The Latest in Life is Strange, a series dedicated to looking at all the latest news and going-ons in the Life is Strange community. I've been away for a bit due to stuff, so I have a few things to cover that aren't necessarily new, but otherwise they are interesting and I'd like to talk about them today. Spoiler warnings for nothing, surprisingly. I finally managed to make an entire video without spoiling anything. Kind of a personal achievement for me. Anyway, let's get into it. Starting with the biggest piece of exciting news, we will soon be getting news on the second season of Life is Strange. Which itself might not sound like real news because it isn't, but in a blog posted by the official Life is Strange Tumblr for the release of the Farewell episode, it states that Michelle Ko and Raoul Barbet, who both worked on season 1, would be revealing new details on their next entry to the series in the coming months, including information on the new story and characters, confirming one of the biggest pieces of speculation that has surrounded season 2, that it will be focusing around a new set of characters. I say speculation because while the developers themselves have said in the past that Max and Chloe's story is done and Farewell was supposedly our last chance to see the world through Max's eyes, this is the first time we've had actual formal confirmation that new characters will be a part of the new game. And if I'm being honest, I'm kind of excited for some new characters. I'll admit, it can be hard to imagine what Life is Strange would be like without Max and Chloe. These two are deeply intertwined twined into the themes of rediscovery, nostalgia, and growing up that were explored in season 1. They seem like such an integral part to this series, but so did Max's time travel powers. And I think one of the great things before the storm was able to prove was that time travel isn't necessary to make a great Life is Strange experience. There's more to these games than just rewinding time. So it's possible the same could be said for Max and Chloe. As much as we love them, I think Donut are capable of making another great Life is Strange game that focuses around brand new interesting characters that we can fall in love with and argue endlessly about who should be with who. A new story, while still a vague description, I think also implies two things. That season 2 won't continue, or at the very least won't be connected to the events of season 1, and considering that, I think would also mean that it will depart from Arcadia Bay and take place in an entirely different setting. We've speculated about this before, and maybe it's kind of obvious that they do have to go down this route, but now with this announcement, it looks like that might be the case. Although to be honest, it's still pretty vague. The question now I guess becomes where would it be set? And really, I think Life is Strange could go almost anywhere from here. Another state, another country, another timeline. The possibilities really are endless. Personally, I would like to see a return to a small comfy town somewhere again, mostly because I just really loved Arcadia Bay and I think Don't Nod really nailed the feeling of a small and mysterious community, but we'll have to wait and see. Another one of the biggest questions I've seen come up around the community lately is how will Don't Not approach a new main character? Will they have another female lead like Max, or will they change things around and have a male protagonist instead? Something I've been questioning myself is whether Don't Not would focus around young characters again. I think what might be an interesting change for season 2 is having the main cast featuring adults and exploring how those adults deal with the supernatural elements and feelings. As much as I love the teenage setting in season 1 and believe that some of the criticism Life is Strange received for its cringy teenage dialogue was blown out of proportion a bit, its writing I think isn't going to age that well. Teenage dialogue is forever evolving, TBH, and I think if season 2 did focus around adults or even just young adults, their dialogue might avoid this aging problem that season 1 could run into at some point. Point. It might be unlikely that Donut would focus around adults, since one of the major themes throughout Life is Strange is its coming of age tale with Max. Telling a story about how teenagers make certain decisions that will determine who they become as adults. Maybe a part of what makes Life is Strange so special is the focus it has on this volatile part of life, where every decision counts. So it's possible Donut might want to continue this theme into Season 2, and personally, while centering around adults, characters might be interesting and helpful, I think I would like to see another coming of age tale, but maybe explored in a different way. I don't really have a preference on whether they focus around a male or female protagonist, or whether they allow us to explore the 
sexuality of those characters again, which I know a lot of people, including myself, really liked about season 1, but compelling, relatable characters are what I really want, and I think if Donut have accomplished this once, I think they could do it again. Last couple of things I'll mention, they're still calling it the next life is strange, even one of the developers have caught on that the community has caught on to this little fact. At this point, I think it's just further confirmation that it won't continue the story of season 1 and thus be its own separate thing and calling it season 2 wouldn't be right, but new theory, maybe it's also because the next Life is Strange will have a subtitle to it, just like Before the Storm. Maybe it'll be called Life is Strange... Brace your feels for impact or something, I don't know. But maybe that's one of the reasons Donod won't refer to it as season 2. Just for the purposes of clarity and me not wanting to change, until we learn an official name, I'll still refer to the new game as season 2, even though it's unlikely it'll be called that. Another thing to question would also be exactly when we might learn some new info. The blog mentions in the next few months, which isn't a super great indication for an exact date, but there are some guesses we can make. E3 being the main one, Before the Storm was officially unveiled during last year's Microsoft E3 press conference, and watching that live was pretty fucking cool. Square Enix is set to be at E3, although that could be for a number of different games, such as Final Fantasy and so on, but there is a chance. Focus Home Interactive is also going to be at E3, the publisher who's currently working with Donod on their other title, Vampire. Again, they could be there because of other games since Vampire does release just before E3, but I can imagine it might still have some presence there, which means Donod would have some kind of presence there which means you get the idea. Maybe it's unlikely, but who knows. Second possibility we might learn something would also be at Gamescom in August, since the original Life is Strange was announced at Gamescom in August 2014, which was almost four years ago. Holy shit, time fucking scares me sometimes. Something to note about that announcement is that there wasn't a release date included. It was only until later we learned that Life is Strange would be coming in January 2015, which I think is totally a possibility for Season 2. Announcement mid this year without a release date, which then gets announced near the end of 2018 for a January 2019 release. Seems like ages away, but trust me, it's not. Another date we might learn something a little earlier than E3 for a possible 2018 release is the 18th of May, exactly one year after Donut officially revealed they were working on a new Life is Strange game. I think this might be the earliest we would learn some information, and it would be pretty cool if they did show us something exactly one year after the official announcement, very Rockstar Games of them. Whenever we learn something new about Season 2, after freaking out about it for 10 minutes on Twitter, I'll get straight to work on another video. Second topic, which is made up of two things, first one being that it was announced a short time ago that Before the Storm would be releasing on Mac and Linux systems, developed by Feral Interactive, who also ported the original Life is Strange over to Mac and Linux a couple of years ago. Not too much to share, except that it will be coming later this spring. And the second thing being that the original Life is Strange was also ported and re-released on iOS devices a short time ago, developed by the Blackwing Foundation and produced by Turn Me Up Games. I've played some of it, really I've only played episode 1, and I wanted to share my quick thoughts. First off, the good stuff. It's Life is Strange on mobile, and it's pretty much the full game now that episode 4 and 5 have recently released as well. Every bit of dialogue and chapter and moment of calm, at least in episode 1, is in this port. Being on a touchscreen, there's also a new way of navigating Max throughout the world, touching an area on the ground and having her automatically walk to wherever you indicated. I like that they did include this, it definitely makes it a bit more touchscreen friendly, but I did switch over to the classic controls just because it's my preference. There's also this really cool photo mode that was added that lets you take control of the camera in both third and first person surprisingly and lets you take screenshots of the world. There's different options that allow you to change Max's outfit or her standing animation and even add some snazzy filters. This was cool as fuck to me and I'm kind of surprised that a photo mode wasn't actually added in the game originally originally, considering Max's love of photography and just how photogenic this game looks. 
It's not as flexible as some of the other custom tools out there that let you take control of the camera, but it's a really nice addition to this port. And hopefully, if Life is Strange ever gets remastered, since that's the cool thing to do these days apparently, this would be really nice to have. Last few notable things I'll mention, there's these really cute stickers in iMessage that you can use to bother your friends with, these were pretty awesome. While playing the game, you can actually view the choices you make when you enter Max's diary. Because I played this on my iPhone 10, the aspect ratio wasn't your usual 16 by 9 it was actually closer to the aspect ratio used in a lot of films, it's why there's a bunch of black bars on the top and bottom of my footage, and I've got to say, I think because of that, it actually made some of the cutscenes more cinematic than on PC and console, thought that was pretty neat. Your save files are stored in iCloud, so if you lose your phone, like I almost did, you won't lose your progress, and you can choose which episodes you want installed if you're limited on storage. To be fair, you could do this on every other platform, but it's nice that it's included here. So overall, it's amazing that we can bring this experience with us wherever we go and cry on the bus if we really wanted to. But of course, to no one's surprise, I do have some complaints and nitpicks. The general quality of the app really isn't as great as I think it could be. The main menu screen takes a bit of time to load fully, there's a bit of a delay when you try to inspect certain items, I encountered a number of bugs that prevented me from moving forward in the game and required me to completely restart the episode since reloading the checkpoint wouldn't work, the depth of field was kind of off in some scenes and triggered my PTSD of before the storm back in the day. The camera sometimes wouldn't be in the right position due to the different aspect ratio, which was pretty annoying and immersion breaking. Sometimes music would play when it shouldn't and vice versa, and then one day it sent me a notification reminding me to play the game. Don't get me wrong, it's a cute notification and it's really my fault for allowing notifications anyway, but no one likes it when mobile games do this. Then there's this issue I have with the graphics of this port. It looks really good sometimes, almost to the same level of its PC and console counterparts, but then in some areas it doesn't look so great, especially with the lighting. Look, I think it's amazing that we've come to a technological point that we are getting games like Life is Strange on mobile phones. Fortnite recently released on mobile, which looks great, and for some reason PUBG as well, which is just insane to really think about considering the scale and scope of that game. Sacrifices have been made graphically with both Fortnite and PUBG to get them on mobile devices, but ultimately, it's not the graphics or the aesthetics that really make those games special or unique considering just how popular they both are. Life is Strange on the other hand, I feel is a different story. Its aesthetics and hand-painted art style combined with the amazing use of its warm lighting gave it this really wholesome and personal feel to the mood of the game. It set it apart and gave it this kind of special identity in a way. With the iOS port, sometimes that identity is lost. The hand-painted art style is there, but it's definitely using some of the lower resolution textures that don't translate style that well. The lighting is there, but it's kind of different. It doesn't illuminate the room in the same way it does on PC and console. It doesn't react the same way when Max interacts with it. It feels artificial and off. The port loses this character that the original game had. It looks okay, but it doesn't look great. And that combined with all of the technical issues and the other smaller things don't really scream polish or quality. And you guys know how I feel about those things. Maybe I'm being a bit harsh. It's an iOS port and more than likely the reason for the reduced lighting and the slow loading times is because mobile phones haven't become that powerful just yet. And it's still a good looking port for the most part, so why should we really care? I'm kind of going into some different territory here in terms of my commentary, but there's a good reason why, and I promise this won't take longish. I really think if Square Enix are going to make the investment into bringing over Life is Strange to smartphones to maybe find a new audience in the casual mobile gaming market, they should at least put in the effort to make a good port so that those new audiences are able to experience Life is Strange to the same standards Donut originally wanted them to experience it. And instead, they release this buggy, almost broken port that's being held back by hardware that isn't that powerful just yet and missing some of the magic that set Life is Strange apart aesthetically, and it seems they released this port anyway 
just to make some quick money from fans of the series. People who would buy this unquestioningly because it's Life is Strange discover its faults afterwards and think, eh, it's just a few dollars and those stickers are pretty cute. And that's the problem. If Square Enix are making these decisions just to solely make money, then what's the point of putting more effort and polish into these products if they know it'll make money regardless? I get that this is a little more complicated than I'm making it out to be. Square Enix is a business and businesses need to make money and it's people like me who are part of the problem for buying these products anyway, but instead of actually getting the developers to make a good quality port, they made something else and Square decided to release this local quality something else anyway. And this sort of decision making does make me worry about the future of other Life is Strange products. Whether it be the Android version that's meant to come out later this year, or the Mac port of Before the Storm, or Life is Strange Season 2, or our next topic that we'll talk about soon. Getting back on track, those are my quick thoughts and uh, conspiracy theories on the Life is Strange app for mobile. Again, I only played through the first episode because I'm not really going to buy the other episodes, so maybe it gets better, but I doubt it if I'm being honest. It's awesome that phones have come to a technological point where we can get these kinds of experiences in our pockets, but I think personally I'd prefer the full, aesthetically pleasing experience on my PC. The third topic I wanted to cover today is the announcement that Square Enix will be partnering with Titan Comics to create a Life is Strange comic line, and you can kind of see where this is going. In a Tumblr post by Titan Comics, it states that they will be creating a four-part miniseries that will be launching in 2018. It'll be set in Arcadia Bay again, and give us the opportunity to dive back into the story of its beloved characters. An image of Blackwell from Before the Storm is included, which might indicate it'll be focused around some of the students there. Exactly who it will focus on, along with when it'll be set, is still a mystery at this point. There's not too much else that we know, it's mentioned we should be learning more about it soonish, and of course my initial reactions to this announcement are mixed. I won't drone on about this again, but it does come back to what I was saying about the mobile port. If making money is the sole objective for Square Enix, then this announcement is worrying. I know the quality is more or less going to be determined by Titan Comics since they're the ones making it and I'll come back to this point, but at the end of the day, just like the mobile port, Square would have some input and investment power on whether they should make something great or make something. Anyway, I really hope they want to make something great because personally, I think there's tons of potential for a really awesome Life is Strange comic series. I think there's still plenty of opportunities to tell deep, interesting stories with the abundance of characters that need a little more fleshing out in this series. Characters like Victoria, Kate, Dana, Justin, Warren, Nathan wouldn't even mind some more of Rachel showing her time at Blackwell. I think it would be cool if we did get something that's centered around Max or Chloe again because I love them so much, but it kind of felt like the farewell episode was our you know, farewell to these characters. That's kind of how it was sold to us before they changed their language a little so that now it may be our last chance we get to see them again, and then boom, comic announcement. I might be alone on this, but I do kind of feel like Max and Chloe's story is done, and that's really sad, but maybe it's time someone else took the spotlight. There's a lot that can be explored here, and a huge bar that Titan Comics need to reach in terms of storytelling with Life is Strange, and that itself comes with a few worries. I'll be honest, I haven't read any of their comics, and I don't know too much about them, other than they've done a number of other video game adaptions in the past, which I guess might be a good indication, but I don't think Life is Strange is like other video games. There's potential, but it's really hard to tell whether you could capture the magic Life is Strange was able to radiate throughout its experience in a comic book. Just like I mentioned earlier with the mobile version, putting it on a less powerful platform lost a bit of its uniqueness, and I guess what I'm trying to say here is that you lose a lot more than just the lighting with a comic book. Then on top of that, it's another set of writers coming into this world, and I'm sure they would like to stay true to the original material, but whether they're able to or not is a concern. I remember back in the day there was a lot of doubt surrounding Deck Nine and their ability to deliver a prequel to Life is Strange, and a lot of relief after episode one when they proved they knew what they were doing. 
for the most part. So maybe Titan Comics can do the same. Maybe Square Enix will take this seriously and let them show us they can make a great contribution to the Life is Strange series as well. Maybe parts one to three will be absolutely amazing and the last part will be a total disappointment, as is tradition. Regardless, I'm going to keep optimistic. If we learn anything new about the comic book, I'll certainly let you guys know. And if you're an avid Titan comic reader, I think you'd probably be able to provide a lot more insight into this than I could. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, that's the end of the second episode of The Latest in Life is Strange. What did you guys think of these stories? Are you excited for some new characters in Season 2? Do you think they'd have a male or female protagonist? Where or when should it be set? Do you have any better ideas for a new title than mine? Have you guys had any experience with the mobile version? What are your thoughts on the whole Square Enix thing? And what would you guys like to see out of a comic series based on Life is Strange? Pretty interesting, right? The chronicles of Samuel and his squirrels, the intricate drama between teenage groups within Blackwell, the adventures of Kate Marsh and her bunny Alice? Definitely let me know all of your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to read them and I love responding to them. As always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a fantastic day.